Welcome everybody to the first of hopefully many art lessons and techniques that uh, I'll be bringing you with some quick links. Uh, my intent here is to basically do these in about three to eight minute segments and uh, not do them too long to bore you. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to get across before we get into anything advanced is like any other job, uh, you must start at the very beginning here. So for some of you that are further along than others, these first two, three, four, five uh, examples of things may not be to your liking. They may be too simplistic, but for some of you beginners out there that have uh, a lot of passion in trying to get into the business, then uh, we will walk through some of the easy components here. So let, for today, we should just start with super basic stuff. Uh, so that as I continue to move on and I talk, the language I'm about to use and the buttons I'm pushing won't be confusing to you, and I can reference back to lesson number one, lesson number seven, or lesson number eight uh, as we get advanced, and uh, you, you will know which one we want to go to. So right now I have, uh, and the reason for doing this is I've seen other art lessons, and I think that the instructor moves a little bit too fast at the beginning um, and, and doesn't sort of slow down so I can see what buttons they're pushing. So I just want to do that. So I have uh, Adobe Photoshop opened up right here. Um, this is the software I'll be using. Um, it's not the latest one, which is CS5. I, I, I've got one a little bit in the mid-grade for some of you that might not have the latest cut. But this one will be able to accomplish all the same things. So first thing that we need to do, uh, if you're going to draw something, obviously, is to get a piece of paper. So you go to file you hit new which is right here and up comes uh, your option of what it is that you want so you now have to give it a size comic books historically have been drawn in inches we do it in inches so we'll convert both these to inches and the width of it is 10 inches wide by 15 inches high. That is the size that we draw at that will give you almost every single comic book that's been done literally in the last 50 years. So that's what most of us are trained to draw. The The second part of getting your piece of paper is again wanting to get a very big resolution. We don't want to get too crazy here and depending upon your computer. So we will start it off at 400. It's a nice it's an it, it's a nice resolution and it's about what most printers print the comic books at so I'm not saying that everything I'm about to teach is comic book related because we'll be talking about how to draw hands and eyes and face and mouths and all those other kinds of things but again we're just gonna start with some basic comic book uh, sizing so 10 inches by 15 at 400 resolution we hit OK and BAM there's there's our piece of paper uh, as you know, if you're drawing, and I am on a Wicom tablet, uh, you can shrink your page and you can also increase your page. Uh, so you can get it to whatever size you want. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is now look at our brushes. Um, but before we do that, so I can show you some examples, then let's talk about layers because layers are going to be your best friend out of all of the things you're going to do when you're drawing. Here's how we get to layers. On my keyboard, I have a shortcut. It's F7. And if I hit F7, it goes away and it comes up. And every time I tap this area right here, this icon right here, every time I touch it, I get a layer. You can see it. Layer 1, every layer 2, layer 3. I get one every single time. And then what you do is if you then touch on it, you can actually give a name. So if we're going to draw something, I'll call this brushes. Then the brushes, I now know that if I get 10, 20 of these layers, uh, exactly what's on each one of them. And that's sort of a sophisticated version that we'll get to probably by lesson 20. But for now, we'll just sort of stay here. So now I've got a layer here on the brushes. Here's what I've done. I've set my computer up, and I'm going to go big here to do a brush I now draw at I used to do a, a brush that was at about a seven or eight point and that's this number right here brush at 15 right now it's at 15 if I open up 
the brush size and I slide this as you can see the brush will get bigger this is 79 point or pixels and this is 20 and you can just make it as big as you want I was drawing at about seven seven or eight when I first started the problem was uh, let's see let's give me I'll give me one at nine the problem was uh, when I was drawing it is that is it this is my soft tip and this is my as I push harder that was only as wide as it was getting so if I go from from soft and I'm pushing really hard now at the very end take a look at the variation that's right here I've now set and I'm going to show you in a moment how, I, how I've done that I've now set my brush instead of it being at 9 I now draw it about 35 or 40 you may say hey Todd how can you go that big because you're not going to get the fine line it's all pressure sensitive so now let's take a look at the line again I go soft which is about what we were doing but the difference is now as I press harder I can get a lot more impressive of a taper and so where, where before I was only going from this thickness here to this thickness here maybe twice as much I can now go from this thickness here to this thickness here which is easily eight to ten times thicker and why do we want to do that because again if we're going to be drawing let's say an eye and we want to we want to give it just a little bit of a bounce I don't have to keep adjusting my brush I can just squeeze onto the screen and push onto the screen a little bit harder and now all of a sudden I can get the illusion of a brush so again uh, all of this dynamic is based upon how much pressure you have now I'm using also a, a Wicom tablet and most of you unfortunately probably don't have one in front of you if you ever get a chance to do that but I'm gonna close this off and I'm gonna come down here and here is my icon for my Wicom tablet and I'm gonna show you very quickly what it is that I've done here right here the tip feel here's where you can set your your setting of how much give you have on the piece of paper right now I I push very hard so I like it slightly firm I, I don't want to be too soft because in my lines gonna get too thick but I like it to be right here you can put it anywhere you want that is basically gonna work for you and your hand and your drawing style if you're a light-handed person you're gonna wanna have this bar you can see you can move it here and if you're average you're gonna be there and if you're like me that always sort of pushes hard you're gonna wanna be right here so this setting is gonna give you that taper that I just showed you on that blank piece of paper now the the next piece here is actually and I have this uh, as a as a shortcut mine is F5 if I hit F5 I now can come in here and it's the brush Th it's this icon right here I want to do a brush you can go to a pencil or you can go to a brush I prefer the brush because again it gives you a taper the the pencil is a dead weight line and uh, we'll be talking about that on another lesson but for now let's talk about brushes so we go to the brush and now we come up in here and now you have to set your 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 setting here so I hit shape dynamic and as you can see this is what the line will look like down here if you don't do a taper on it but if you hit shape dynamic notice how it's going to give you a taper it doesn't mean it's going to automatically give you a taper it just means it's not going to be a blunt line and now that you've given you've hit shape dynamic go to this box right here brush tip shape and if you touch that you can now adjust your brush and get wh you where you want I think the default on this is about 24 make sure that whenever you go and do your brush get your spacing from 24 I don't know why that's a default put it down to one get make sure you get your spacing down to one it's important as you can see and I slide it watch what happens to your line your lines gonna get bumpier and craggier the bigger your spacing gets so if you want the smoothest line possible you go down to 1% and it's gonna be nice and smooth on both sides here the other one is the hardness factor as you can see as I slide this and here's the percentage if you want if you want a, a hard line like I've got here then you're gonna want that close to hundred percent if you want a soft line and again see what happens if I go here and if we go close notice notice how soft this line is compared to this line same tool same brush it's just that the hardness factor was done so depending on what you're trying to do but since I do a lot of illustration 
I like to have the hardness literally all the way up to 100%, and it gives me the sharpest line. And then the other thing that uh, I like to do that gives you a little bit of a brush feel, and again, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, is this. This is usually a circle, and this is usually roundness is 100%, and the angle, I believe, is 100%. So you, this is a perfect circle, and it, and it gives you a nice line, but I've adjusted mine to change the angle to 130%, just so it gives me a little bit better taper, and the roundness isn't quite 100%. You can see if I tap this, and I go to 100%, see how it's a circle now? That, 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 that's going to be just a slightly different line than I'm going to get if I, if I sort of taper off my line right now. So I like to go to 85%. I'm not saying that's what you should be using. Uh, I recommend that everybody experiment so and make sure you get to where you want, but that's the one that I like. So I'll go back to, sometimes I do 90%, 85%, so we'll leave it at 90. And then I tilt this to 130 to 135%, just so that I can get, as a left-hander, I'm left-handed, I, I have a tendency to draw this way. And so I find that if I've got that angle like that, it works best for me. So those, those are going to be your basics. Get your piece of paper. Get your brush. Make sure that your spacing's down. Make sure your hardness is up. Find an angle and a roundness that works for you. Hit preset, and every time you come up, that setting will be there. And so now that we, now that we have it, you can now start to go into your page and start drawing. And if we bring up our layers again, we go, okay, now here's why we like the brushes. I've given you those drawings there, but if I click it off, it goes away. I don't have to deal with it. And we'll go away with it. So that's today's first lesson. We'll go through some of these as we advance into the next one. We'll be swapping between black and white here a lot. We'll be using burn tools. We'll be using the bucket to fill stuff. We'll be using the lasso and all the square. Um, and so we'll be going through some of those just so I can sort of show you how it goes. And then some of it will just be, instead of teaching you how to use the software, some of it will just be, you know, how do you how do you draw a finger tot? And, you know, I'll, I'll go through the dynamics of how we draw a finger and you put the fingernail on there and where you put the wrinkles and how you get into a finger real quickly. But I can do this fairly quickly. What I need to do now is teach you how to do it just as quickly as I can because I've done it over time. So there's there's a finger, and uh, we'll we'll get to those lessons in the future. But for now, I just want to make sure that we have an understanding that when I say get your page, get your brush, get your tools, and let's get going. And oh, by the way, make sure you get your layer. And if you don't want that layer, you can take that and drag it into this garbage can, and bam, it goes away. If you hit Control Z, what you just did will come back, and you don't have to worry if you made a mistake. But you can either add or subtract layers as you need, and there's a couple other tricks. So, welcome to that first lesson. I'm sure that, again, most of you that were waiting for it, hoping that I'd teach you how to draw a better Spider-Man or a better Superman or Batman, may be a little bit disappointed, but we'll get to those in the future. Um, I just wanted to make sure that all the rest of you that had high hopes of drawing Superman and Batman, or maybe even just doing a nice drawing of your girlfriend or boyfriend, um, could at least get to the starting point, and we'll start to actually teach you how to draw the body and anatomy 